When you are dealing with sigmoidal or S-shaped curves, like this one, for instance with EC50 determination or IC50 determination, then one of the best formulas or equations is the Boltzmann equation. I put that equation here. So let's say these are our measurements. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the issue is. In this case we are finding the probability that an ion channel will be open relative to voltage. So we put the voltage values here and the percentage of the open channels there. And we got the, the bluish line here. When I click on that bluish line you will see this is basically what we are plotting. Then we guess, this is an educated guess, what the half value is. The half value at y equals 0 0.5 lies between probably minus 5 and minus 15 somewhere in this range. The slope is an educated guess. How much does it go up for each new value? And then we are going to implement the formula for Boltzmann. I put it right there. It uses the halfway value and the slope, uses the exponent function. Then we calculate the mean y, which is just the average function of all the column b values. The degrees of freedom is count all the b values minus the count of a1 through H2, which is the number of parameters we use, these two. So those are the degrees of freedom. Then we calculate the standard error for Y. Here is the formula for it. We take the observed Y values minus the Y fit values. Those are the Boltzmann values. Di divided by the degrees of freedom and take the square root of it. That's what we did here. Don't forget in this case, because we are doing here a little more than you think, we are taking all the differences between B and C to the power of 2. So we have to make this an array formula. So we use Control shift enter after you have put the formula in there. Then we need the sum of the squared residuals. Again, that is an array function, array formula. So we take the differences between B and C, between observed and predicted, to the power of 2 and sum all of them. Then we are going to find out what are these boundaries for our predictions. I make it a 95% confidence interval. So I use the T inverse function. Based on 95%, so that is a 5% error chance, based on H4, that is the degrees of freedom. That's the critical T value. So we have the critical T value. Then we are going to find out what is the confidence interval. The confidence in interval is in here based on a 95% confidence, and this is the formula for it. H7 times H5, which is basically the critical T value, times the standard error of Y. Once we know that, we can calculate the upper CI, that is the predicted value plus the confidence interval, and the next one is minus the confidence interval. So once we have done all of this and we plot all of this, then you will see we don't have a good fit yet. Why not? Because the half value and the slope were guesses. So how can we find a better guess for those? The most important one is the sum of the squared residuals. That should be as low as possible. In the ideal case, zero. But that may be hard to do. So what we do need is we need from data solver. Uh, if you don't have solver activated yet, you do have it, but you may not have it activated, then you go to add-ins 
and you add that one by go to and you find an add in that you want. It, so you, you need not only the analysis toolpad but also the solver add in. Okay. Once we have done that, we can do a solver situation. And in solver, we are going to set that sum of squared residuals to a minimum value by changing the half value and the slope. But we put a few constraints in there. That h1, the half value, should be less than or equal to minus 5 and greater than or equal to minus 15. Based on those things, you may have to experiment with this depending on the information you are using. I'm going to solve it and you will see that it came up with a much better fit, a half value of minus 10 and a slope of 12.19. And the, the blue curve is what we observed and the other curve is what we calculated. And the range for them is we have a 95% confidence that the predicted value will lie within that range. So we have a, a pretty good fit here. And you will see in this case that the sum of squared residuals is almost zero.